welcome to another episode of the 72 Pin Connected Podcast, the only podcast where you join the conversation and the game. With us this week, we have Tom. Hello, everyone. I'm drinking out of a a mug that doesn't have any branding on it, so you shouldn't pay attention to it. Don't, <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't 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 worry about it. Is and, that a Jake oh. from State Farm mug? It is a Jake from State Farm mug. Yes, the nice. the illustrious illustrator and graphic designer of Seventy Two Pin Connector, who also has a fantastic YouTube channel filled with Valorant tips. So go check that out. And also with us this week is Adam. Hello. Hi. So just letting everyone know, in case you have any of us on Steam, you can just uh, click on to us, join the game, and clearly this week we are playing Rocket League, much as we have the last few weeks, but whatever. Yes. So how's it been going, fellas? Not bad. Going? I went back going. to work this week, and I've been very tired all week. You had it's, a... It's uh, amazing how, how quickly a sleep schedule can be completely destroyed by not having to go to work for a week. Yep. Oh my God. I was playing games with you through the week. So your work. Yeah, schedule... that never happens. Exactly. It absolutely never happens. Like I know your sleep schedule was completely fucked. It was so fun though. It was nice. It was really nice. Like, Hey, I'm off work. Holy shit. I can do a Tarkov run with Adam. This is new. <laughs> Ah, uh, what about you, Tom? How's your guys' week been? Yeah. My, I honestly, this week I've just been fucking exhausted. And unfortunately, it's it's that type of exhaustion where you're just like, yeah, I, I want to play video games. I know, like, for my mental health and just, like, chilling out, it would be good for me to play video games. But, oh, uh, it seems like so much work. Have you guys ever had that where, yes. like... You want to play a game, but you're just so fucking exhausted. It seems like work, even looking through Steam. Or you scroll yeah. through the list, and you, you just give up. Uh, the second one a lot. Like, actually, the second one hit me a little bit today. And then it just hit me yeah. like, you know what? I know what I kind of want to do for a little bit. Yep. Sometimes it's just like, oh, I'm so tired. But, like, Tarkov kind of sounds fun. But, like, do I really want to get into all of that? And, like, deal yeah. with all the people who are good at the game and wait on the queue. And it's and just you so gotta, much effort. You got to try hard because like even even if you're in casual mode for certain games, you've got those people that are like, come on, man, we're trying to win. And you're just like, no, nah, I'm just trying to like drink a beer and play Counter-Strike. Yeah. Come on. Well, like my thing was I wasn't necessarily feeling anything intense. So I'm like, I'll just go to Tarkov and I'll just make some guns because we're close to the reset. So I'm like, I'll just make some guns to run with. And then yeah. Adam saw me in game. So he hits me up, and then next thing I know, I'm spending the next three hours making guns and making runs. <laughs> we had some fun runs. We didn't... I think I only extracted one. Um, but, uh, extra the... Uh, blah, 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 PM not PMC. The We had a scav run we extracted on reserve. Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. But most of them we died. Yes. Which but we had some fun gunfights. I died Well, as with, long as you uh, had fun guns... I died with two really nice uh, M4 builds I'm hoping to get back. Like, I I exhausted one mil out of my 3.5 reserve today. So I'm making a dent in that money, finally. Nice. Got to use it or lose it. Yeah, that, uh, so the end of the wipe is coming in, like, within two to four weeks. So the economy is all jacked up. Yes, everybody's play style is all <laughs> jacked up everybody's just going for uh pvp combat nobody's really looting as much nobody's doing uh quests or anything i do kind of like that though like you i've i've played a lot of mmos that have then died but you see mm -hmm. a whole lot of like interesting stupid shit when a game is about to go away uh -huh. um and not not that tarkov is going away but i really really like the idea of regular wipes and having yeah. them be kind of like nebulous like you know it's yeah. going to happen sometime but you don't know exactly when mm -hmm. like right I, now I think we it have keeps a, things we have a few week window right now that we know it's happening soon we just yeah. don't the yeah. very next the big big update next is wiping we just don't know when exact yep so from what i understand from people who are been playing a lot longer than me um every time they do a wipe like one week before they'll announce it and then they start doing pre-wipe events. So like 
maybe everybody has all the traders unlocked at the highest level so you have access to all those items no matter nice. what level that's you are. cool um maybe certain items are dirt cheap or maybe every item is dirt cheap and you can just literally buy whatever you want um i know one of them i think they replaced all the scavs with raiders which if you huh. played the game oh raiders God. are basically super scavs with way better gear and ridiculous like aimbot aim so I got smoked by one today. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, fantastic. I don't know that, that wasn't even a raider. That was just a, a scav boss henchman. Oh, okay. Like the raiders are crazy. But they're both nuts. But yeah, it's, but yeah I'm looking forward to it. It's fun. I, I'm, I'm excited. And I like the idea of a reset to where everyone goes back to a level playing field. Because... Mm -hmm. The game's not a ranked game. It it doesn't fit that kind of mm -hmm. MO. But what it does have is like an upper hand that players can get from having more money because they can yep. deck out. They can have top class armor. And if they get into a PMC that's not that way, it, it can be detrimental. Granted, the other player doesn't have to engage, but if they do, they're going to hurt. Sometimes they do. Mm -hmm. So I like the reset, res uh, gets everyone on level playing field. And I like that they're mm -hmm. doing fun stuff before it too. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, like for a game honest. as serious as Tarkov, having kind of a, a goofy ass patch or a goofy ass week is a really nice change of base. Yeah. And the idea of having all the traders, that's awesome. I'm never going to have that ever. Mm. I'm never going to run through all yeah. the shit to do that. And to actually see what's there for a little bit, that's cool. Yeah. And honestly, as weird as it sounds, like I've done a lot of grinding in the game to get like the tr some of the traders leveled up and like tasks done and stuff. I'm actually looking forward to starting over and doing it all again. I don't know why. Usually stuff like that, like like if I'm in the middle of a game and like my save file gets messed up and I have to start over, usually I will never pick up that game ever again. But yeah. for some reason in this one there's it's just, it I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to doing it all over. Well, I, I kind of wonder if that's because it's got like those almost roguelike qualities to it. So you're yeah. already like, um, like you're, you're pre-inclined, you're, you're primed, your brain is ready for the wipe. Yeah. yeah. That's probably it. Yeah. Like, well, you, you know, Tarkov is not about permanency, right? It is, it is no, absolutely a run-based game. Yeah. Run-based game. All of your equipment is very easily taken away from you. Yeah. Everything is a consumable in Tarkov, whether you want it to be or not. Yep. But yeah, damn it, there was something something literally just popped in my head when you were saying that and I can't remember. But yeah, it's oh, gonna be no. rad. Super looking forward to it. But uh yeah, so I played some of that. That was good. That was real good. Also, um I got into a little bit of a classic game after seeing Tom doing some classics. <laughs> oh really? I, I uh, got Project 64 up and running. I uh, grabbed another ROM, and I, I grabbed a ROM. For those who think it's legal, I don't care or whatnot. I have the game on my window seal He's right there. The it's uh, Ogre Battle 64, baby. But I'm doing a run on it. I'm going to start <laughs> trying to stream it um, every Monday. So I'm not going to play it off of stream. I'm just only going to stream it. Nice. Yeah. I'm gonna have to check that out or watch a VOD or something because I've heard you talk about this game a lot. A lot. I've never actually seen the game. Like I don't know what it looks like to play the game. Um, some of the stuff I'm getting excited for now is because of stuff that I know it does for me later. Later vods, yeah. you'll see more of like what the game has to offer. Because right now, like, oh, I encountered a young dragon. I recruit a young dragon. He just goes up and bites fuckers. But as you <laughs> advance in the game eventually he'll turn into his element. So he'll go to a second form, which is like a grounded dragon of that element. And if they're up mm -hmm. front, they still just bite fuckers. But in back, they'll do an AOE spell. And then they'll yep. eventually go to the top tier form of that dragon for that element. Where even in the front, they're doing three attacks of that AOE. In the back, they're doing a hits the entire squad attack twice. So like, but they scale massively. So it's one of these things where early game, you don't understand why it's so important if you've never played the game before. Because you'll just okay. see it as, oh, this is a big unit that takes up too much space and only does melee damage. And then eventually you'll see, oh shit, these fuckers turn into awesome beasts. 
Um, but yeah, um, it, it's so far, I mean, it holds up exactly how I thought. It wasn't a game designed to look super realistic. So yep. it, it ages well in that aspect. So That's good. yeah, it's the one thing I will say, Project 64 does not like my Xbox One controller. Project 64 no. has been dead for a very long time. It's the last one I used and it mapped my 360 controller. I could have yeah, sworn it did. So yeah, emulators I, in the past um, five years or so, there's been a pretty massive upheaval. Um, mm -hmm. Moopin or RetroArch with a Moopin core is probably your best bet. Um, like there's, there's a lot of great N64 emulators. I was actually super surprised when I saw Project 64 pop up in your Discord status. Um, and I wanted to reach out, but you're already streaming at that point. So we'll, uh, we'll have to work on, on getting some of that stuff updated. No, it, honestly, it's fine. The emulator itself were great. My only issue is just that it didn't map my controller. So I was playing Nintendo 64 ROM on mouse and keyboard. Or more so, Ooh, that keyboard. Sounds rough. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, you're gonna want I, that I controller. I eventually got it, and it actually makes sense to me now. But yeah, it was it was a little rough. Mm. Uh, so, wow! I just realized we went straight into games because that segued into Tarkov. We didn't. Talk we food. did, and you guys didn't even give me a chance to talk about my powdered vanilla chai chai tea latte. Oh, yeah, is it good? Instant tea. Um, yeah, it's it's quite literally like uh, like you would get those instant coffee packets with cream, sugar, coffee, and all that stuff. Yeah. It's quite literally the same thing, but for van vanilla chai. So, uh, okay, I threw threw some milk in here, heated it for a couple minutes in the microwave, and it's it's fucking delicious. <laughs> I'm glad you said it's you did it with milk because that is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's just like if you're doing instant hot chocolate, microwave milk, don't microwave water. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's it's good. Um, it's not the best tea I've ever had by, by any yeah. means. And it's, it's probably not even particularly good chai, but, uh, you know, it's a powder. It's two minutes in the microwave and it makes me happy. So. <laughs> yeah. I, um, used to have some K cups around here for that. That was really good. Drop some honey in it. Oh, it's good. Shit. Ooh, I'm gonna have to try that. Get you some honey. Been doing a lot of peanut butter and honey sandwiches and tortillas recently. So yeah. Nice. Though I found out the hard way that uh, Gina does not like cream cheese. No. <laughs> oh, um, I didn't for a long time. I uh, was like, you know what? I want something a little different. We have tortillas and we had some uh, extra Tostitos. So I'm like, I'm going to melt me some cream cheese. We have some hot and spicy tuna and some Franks. Mix it all together. Make like a little dip out of it. Oh, I thought it was pretty good. I didn't like it. But... If people don't like cream cheese and people don't like tuna, they are really not going to like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she <laughs> yeah. likes the tuna, but she is not a fan of cream cheese. That's and fair. It, it had a decently strong cream cheese taste. But man, on the tortillas, refrigerate them and then eat it cold the next day. Oh, yeah, that was good. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. But I also like cream cheese and I like tuna and I like spicy. So it was everything I like. But yeah, it was weird. Who doesn't like a good tortilla? Yeah, I love dips. I, I am a sucker for cheese dips of any sort with tortillas. It could be the shittiest, like you melted cheese whiz into a bowl, <laughs> and I'm going to scoop every last fucking ounce of that cheese whiz out of the bowl. <laughs> oh man, like good like queso blanco. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, it destroys my soul in a good way. Have you ever done yeah, like, I, a uh... melting pot? No. So it's a fondue place. And they'll do a three-course meal. The first course is cheese fondue. <laughs> oh, man, it's so good. Especially, like, I'd never had it before then, but, like, apples and cheese. I didn't know it was a thing. What? Oh, yeah. That's a thing. How it? I didn't know that was a thing. There's either. actually... That sound like a good combination. There's a portion of America aggressive... that, that, that throws sliced cheddar cheese on top of uh, apple pie. And I see okay, cheddar. that's weird. Cheddar seems too bitey to me. But like a more mellow cheese, I actually really enjoyed. Or on maybe apples. American cheese, I don't know. Like a, give, or, give a or you could just do uh, macaroni and cheese dust. Just do uh, craft dust. Nah, dude, no. You, you you make an apple pie, but the filling is oh. just craft cheese. <laughs> you, you're essentially <laughs> making a mac and cheese pie. Yeah, with apples. 
with apples though. The seeds, you're losing I'd, me there. I'd like that with yep. without the apples, please. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's like when you get the tor or the tortoise in. What the hell? The uh, artisan the and cheese, where they have all the bread crumbs. Tortellini. <laughs> they have the big, thick spiral noodles with the bread crumbs on top and shit. Hmm. I almost uh, prefer without the bread crumbs. I'm weird. I like the little, uh, the little kind of like when. Texture. Yeah. I kind of like when mac and cheese has a uniform texture, almost. You know, you and Renault both. I, I recently learned that my wife is a, uh, she's not recovering. She's an active texturist. She is against <laughs> the mixing of the textures. No, I love and stuff it, that has mixed textures. It's just some things I really like when they're uniform. Well, there's some things that, like, as a kid, wrong. apricots, you know, they have, like, a little skin on them. If you're eating, like, sliced Ooh. apricots. Like, as a kid, I, I had that in my mouth. I almost lost it. Same with peas. Peas, they have, like, a weird hole on the outside, and they're squishy as shit. Like, it, no, 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 dude. That fucked me up as a kid. Like, I couldn't eat peas because of it. Huh. Okay. Now I know. But, I'm all about all kinds of mixed textures. Like, if you can make something crunchy and sloshy and kind of wet, but it's not supposed to be, and you know it's, it's no weird. And then you've got, like salt or sugar crystals in it and it's dripping and greasy and waxy all at the same time yeah i'm in you're a disgusting um, human being what is <laughs> one thing that is crunchy and sloshy shepherd's pie yes yes <laughs> the, the mashed potatoes on top get crispy and then underneath they're still fluffy and what whatnot exactly crunchy and sloshy sloshy sounds more liquidy though gravy shepherd's pie like, can be liquidy have gravy yeah. in that shit yeah Okay, a um, a uh, crunch wrap, country crunch wrap from Taco Bell breakfast. It's got Ooh. some crunch. It's got it some has... gravy. It's got eggs. It's got sausage. I mean, that that's a textural like buffet. I'm a big supporter of the crunch wrap in all of its forms. Yeah, agreed. Yes. Solid. Yes, yes. But no, like so. Another texture thing that got me. Um, I was on a date once where she made a salad, and I'd already ate because I was afraid that the food would be bad. So I was full. So I'm trying to be a nice person and eat this salad. And it's super crisp romaine lettuce. So I'm like, okay, I yeah. put the fork through it. It crunches while I stab it. I'm like, okay. I put it in my mouth and bite down and it just squishes. I oh, almost puke instantly. Oh, there was avocados in it underneath the leaves that I didn't know. Oh, oh no, that's the worst You gotta be thing. ready for avocado. You can't yeah. just throw that on somebody. Like, when, I, when you are mentally I love prepared. avocado, but. Oh. Yeah, I was prepared Ugh. for crisp water, and I got a squish. It's like, oh my god, is this rotten? It's literally where my head first went. Oh no. Yeah. You, yep. If you're prepared for crunchy, and you wow, that was a nice angle on that shot. If you're prepared for crunchy, <laughs> and you get squishy instead, something is horribly wrong. Like yes. terribly wrong. Like, have you ever been like at a at a pool or something or the beach and something got wet and you didn't expect it? So you like grab a handful of chips and there's like one that somehow got water on it. Oh, or is that just chip? me? Oh, that's awful. Yeah. Now that said, I, I don't know the scenario, but I know soggy chip. Yeah. Or something that's been left in dip too long where yes. it just permeates the chip. But I actually don't mind that in nachos. Like, if you get a big old thing of nachos at a restaurant, you know the ones in the bottom center are going to be soggy as shit. Yeah, but I think I it's, it's the expectation. Ones. Yeah, okay. That's what it's all about. You got to mentally prepare for the song. <laughs> I need that on a t-shirt, by the way. Prepare for the song. Prepare, prepare for, for the, the song. song. So I had a new food today. Oh. I was telling Eric about it earlier. Have you guys ever had tortas? Tortas. No. It's a Mexican sandwich. Um, this is I've, I've never been. I've never seen this on a menu before, but apparently it's like a it's a thing. Uh, but this one place I ordered from today had had tortas and and they were it's good. It's basically on I'm trying to describe the bread. Kind of like, like a hoagie roll, like it's pretty fluffy bread, but it's flatter than that. Ooh. It's not as big. Kind of pressed, almost like um, like a Cuban sandwich, but thicker bread. Okay. Um, All right. And I had I had the asada, so it was the marinated steak chunks, and it had uh, refried beans, like as a spread on the bread, mashed avocado, uh, pico de gallo, uh, jalapenos, 
and um, I think they put a little mayo on it. Mayo? Yeah, it's a that sandwich. Seems, yeah. I, I get it. Okay. Ooh. But this thing was amazing. I, I absolutely stuffed myself with this thing. This thing was huge. It was like this big. It was how big? That is big. It. Oh, nice. Oh, Jesus. It's a big sandwich. Oh, yes. Okay, but, I oh didn't my know God, what the I wanted The flavor combinations were fantastic. I, I need Mexican food now in a bad way. There, yeah, was I, a, there was some meme. I think it was a tweet or something where somebody said, look, the thing, honestly, that I'm really depressed about with this whole quarantine situation is I just want to eat in a Mexican restaurant again. Yeah. Like that restaurant where after your fourth thing of chips, they start looking at you <laughs> judging. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I know. I'm a fat ass. I embrace it. More salsa. More salsa. I miss that you just about pour it um, down your gullet. college. We had a uh, Mexican restaurant right across campus that chips and salsa wasn't just free when you got meals and shit. If you sat at the bar, they brought you yeah. unlimited chips and salsa. Nice. And they had like $2 fucking um, steins of uh, yep. Dos Equis. Oh, nice. man. Ugh. Even if you get takeout, like DoorDash Mexican food, they still give you a, a bag of chips and salsa. Really? Hmm. Yeah. Nice. Like, I don't have the bag within arm's reach anymore, but yeah, it's like a decent sized bag of just full of chips and then a cup of salsa. Yeah. I, I think when I know me, when me and my dad go to a Mexican restaurant, though, like, my dad will straight up just be like, can you bring us two more salsas? Because we're going to need them <laughs> later, for sure. <laughs> so go ahead and bring those things out now. Yeah. Nice. So is it just me? I've never ate at a Mexican restaurant. I'm like, this is just the best thing ever. Like, oh, you haven't been the right one then. Like, yeah. I've never been in and I thought this is bad. Love... I just thought they were all equally good. Just nothing amazing. No, they are not equally good. They're, most of them are solid. I'll give you that. Like, yeah. they're, they're pretty consistently good. But some of them are a, a league above, for sure. I don't. I can't but remember I the love, last time I've had bad Mexican food. Like, yeah. at, at the very least, it's always been like it's been okay. Good. Like, yeah, oh fine. yeah, I'm not meaning this in a detrimental way. I think any Mexican restaurant I've been to, I would go to again right now. It's just I don't yeah. think there's any out of all of them I've ever had. I don't have any where I'm like I want to go to that one. They're all just like ah, eh, whichever one's closest. There was one place, but, one place I can name, and it's really unfortunate because. I went there on a business trip. So I don't live there. I'm nowhere in that neck of the woods and I cannot get back there easily. Um, it, was, it was this place literally by a graveyard in El Paso, Texas. Uh, oh, it was man. quite literally next to a graveyard. Um, and they had, their salsa had to be refrigerated. When I bought some to go, they actually put it in like one of those like, portable throwaway uh coolers like the styrofoam ones nice. because they make it with with like delicious mexican beef Ooh. it was incredible so you dip the chip in you get the hotness you get tomato you get all the spices but then you get like this kind of weird beefy chew to it not like in a texture way but like in a fullness of flavor kind of thing uh, oh my god i ate both I jars <laughs> i bought both jars and ate them in a week. Nice. Oh my well, god, that's that stuff was I bet, incredible. I bet also, the closer you get to the Mexican border, the better the food gets too. Oh yeah. Like, well, you start getting the Tex-Mex too, which yeah. I'm not saying. Yeah. Once again, not saying in a bad way. It's just I mean that it, it's from it's a that thing. region. Tex-Mex like is the, great. When we went to RLCS and we met Dark Soul Invader, who's from New Mexico. And he brought some salsa that his family make. I guess New Mexican cuisine is like another kind of like how Tex-Mex is. They have their kind of twist on Mexican food. Oh my mm. God, the salsa was good. See, that's weird to me coming from like the spots I come from, like Ohio, Washington. Like I can't think of anything that is regional. To th I shouldn't say that. We have uh, Skyline, but that's like the only yeah. regional thing I could think of. It's some uh, greater's. Young's Dairy Farm. Well, but like there's they, there's a couple. Things but those are restaurants. Those aren't regional foods. Those so aren't foods. Those are just regional good restaurants. That's true. Or like Skyline has the there. Greek chili. That's kind of tri-statey. Yeah, that's true. 
But that's because I'm. I say that because I mean it's Gold Star, it's Skyline, and I don't know of any others that do that style of chili. So Washington does have one thing, and I cannot believe I missed that shot. That was really fucking close. Um, but uh, Washington does have one thing, uh, which is the coffee. If you like craft coffee or small batch stuff or super fucking hipstery coffee, that's way too goddamn expensive, like I do. Yeah, Washington's your state. I I think that exists everywhere though, in really big yeah, cities. Yeah, it does. I kind I mean, of, but in Seattle, it's almost like a religion. I think there's more of them probably in your area because yes. there's, coffee is a huge thing there. But like yeah. something I've never seen before was little drive up coffee shops the size of a fucking Volkswagen. I love those yeah. things. Those things are so cool. It's so they're weird. Good too. And you have like the bikini bistros and stuff and like that. <laughs> like they're shameless. I forgot man. those existed. Yeah, they don't care. The coffee shit, but they give you someone with a bikini serving it to you. <laughs> coffee shit but hey <laughs> so uh 72 pin connector bikini coffee bistro when uh nope d-laz okay d just called out something i don't know if this is true or not but it, he said it and i kind of resonates ohio thin crust pizza like donato like casano's marion's marion's i think flying pizza can't you i don't well, know flying pizza is kind of a new york thing i don't know if i've ever had thin crust anywhere else Really? Oh, I've had thin crust everywhere, and I've lived in a lot of different okay, places. Because I typically like, don't look for it because I like it, but it's not filling. Yeah, it's it's not like Chicago deep dish, right? Like thin crust pizza is like just normal pizza. It's Chicago. It's deep not dish like an, an event. It's an event. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you gotta you gotta mentally and physically prepare to not move the entire week. <laughs> It's I remember I got a small, a small Chicago deep dish pizza. I ate literally a quarter of it every single day I was in the hotel. And that was the only thing I ate those days. Like, it was just that filling. I, I like Chicago. It, but... Chicago deep dish will fill your entire gastrointestinal system completely full. Yep. <laughs> All at once. I enjoy it. I think it's oversold. I, I'm a New York over Chicago kind of guy when it comes to those. I agree. Styles. Have to you me, had they're... it from like a actual Chicago place though, or just homemade? Homemade. It was. Oh good. no, you gotta. It's, it's actually completely different. different. It's completely different. Yeah, like that's not just like one of those like foodie things that that we say or me being a hard ass, but it is. It is completely different. Well, there's a certain I've way had they home. make their sauce. There's a certain way they put it together. Mm -hmm. I've had it's homemade, and I've had um, like at a food truck where they only do Chicago style. Oh, okay. yeah, the I best Chicago probably. style deep dish, because I don't know if a, even a food truck can capture it because when you go to a place in Chicago to get deep dish pizza, you will sit at the table for one hour while your pizza bakes. <laughs> Literally. That is not an exaggeration. You will sit for a complete hour for them to pull it out of the oven. And then you've got to wait another 20 minutes. So it's not quite literally boiling in your mouth. The last one I went to, um, they were like, just so you know, if you get the deep dish pizza, if you're not familiar with this kind of stuff before, um, it takes 50 minutes to cook in the oven. So go ahead and order your pizza now, and then we'll come back and we'll get your drinks and your appetizers if you want them, or if you want anything before the pizza comes out, you order that now too. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, it's a thing. It's an the event. one thing I, this was what we did at home. I'm sure it's at Chicago places too, that I did appreciate. They took legit mozzarella and sliced it to put in the bottom. Yeah. 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 Gino's East of Chicago pizza was the one that I always go to. Yeah. And that's a good one. I, I have never found anything better than Gino's. They sell those, uh, they sell frozen pizza, Gino's East, like mm -hmm. in grocery stores. You could probably get them wherever you guys are. Oh, they They're not up. bad. It's, it's not as to. good as going there, obviously. And I wouldn't expect it to be, but it's actually pretty, pretty damn good. Yeah. It's like frozen White Castle, which I guess is another Midwest thing, right? Yeah. White Castles and, and shitty onion laden sliders uh, are definitely. They literally are definitely... cook those on top of a bed of onions. Do you I, know that? Yes. Oh, I. That's, White that's Castle ridiculous. is my life. <laughs> oh, man. No. I'm I telling you. Breakfast. Can't. Breakfast is the only thing they do well. I love everything about White Castle. No, nah, their breakfast. I look like, like I love everything about White Castle. I'd like to try White it Castle. again, just because tastes change over time and stuff. I haven't had it forever, but um, I've had it since I yeah, moved out here, and I still don't care for it. Yeah. 
But it is what it is. It's nasty ass sliders. So <laughs> I'm Sorry, I mean they're they're delicious beef. No, sliders. no, they they are one hundred percent nasty ass it's sliders. Garbage That's all food. What it is. Yeah, it's drunk food. It's made with it's made with love, but it's not good for you. It's body. not made with love. You're it's not made with loathing. Love. It's made with loathing. That tastes like loathing. <laughs> and if the burgers don't just, taste just like, like loathing, the taste after or the smell after is loathing. <laughs> just like uh, you know Cincinnati's famous meat slurry. That they try to call chili. By the way, it's not a knock against Skyline. It's literally my favorite food. Uh, DLS it... calls out crystals as a Western White Castle. Fuck crystal. I've never seen it. Fuck I've never crystal. Seen I've been, I've been to crystals because I I did a whole lot of traveling when I was younger. Uh, it's it's not even comparable. Is they it, try. Is it a cow? But it thing? is it is it is the burger. No, no. It's um it's like a more southern thing. It. Mm. Crystal to White Castle is Burger King to McDonald's. Uh, Burger King's better oh. than McDonald's. No, Burger King is a massive trash fire. Oh, Burger, Burger King's King beef sucks, tastes dude. so much better than McDonald's. I fucking hate everything about Burger King. Their fries are better. Their beef is better. It's the only their place where I've ever gotten... fries are not better. What are you... I'm yeah, sorry. No, that's, I that's like offensive. potato with my fries. What, you guys like that's little... offensive. Sh- you like little shoestring shit that's nothing but oil? I mean, that's all McDonald's fries I... is oil and salt. I bet you eat smiley fries. <laughs> I'll, I'll take like fucking I'm quarter sorry, potatoes last, that are roasted. The last handful of times I've been to a Burger King, it tastes like shitty B tier every other ha- fast food place. Yeah. Like I remember loving it as a kid. Like their their burgers were always good and I didn't hate their fries. But the last couple times I've went, it was like, we ran out of money. Here's like the shittier version of what we used to do. Burger King is the only like, fast man. food restaurant to ever serve me a legitimately moldy sandwich. Ooh. It was molded. I took it out of the wrapping, almost took a bite. I'm like, that's a little dark. Is that? Holy shit. And then I peeked under. Yep. Straight up mold. That has nothing Thank to do you, with Burger King. King and has everything to do with the f- actual individual the, the, location. I am, I am I know blaming it, Burger King. I know a lot of it's probably the, the individual location. But Transient property. Like I'm blaming Burger King corporate. It was the CEO himself that served me moldy <laughs> bread. That was the motherfucker King with the crown giving you that mold. It's true. He but just I'm, like, you want some penicillin, son? And I'm like, no, please, dad. <laughs> Dave brings up Five Guys fries. Those are really good. Five Guys fries are so good. I still, and they yeah. they win also in just sheer quantity. Yes. Jesus yeah. Christ. Okay, how do you guys feel about curly fries? Fucking love them. They're okay. I I prefer. I them. like them, but I feel I like will get, get curly more... fries over regular fries every day. The amount of ketchup you can get to fry ratio Waffle is fries. excellent because you just put yep. it down in the middle of that paper cup and it just perfectly. You, you fits. get the corkscrew and you just. Yep. One down, one up. You're, yep. That's it. Absolutely. There's no scoop action needed. Nothing. Uh, a- Slugger points out in the chat, waffle fries over curly fries. So I I agree. I think <sighs> yeah. waffle fries are the best form of fry. I Agreed. like them better than every other form. Yeah. Um, now, okay. I well, want I a know. waffle fry. Like, I, just straight fry. What about tater tots? Um, Do those count as a fry? I'm going to uh, count them as want, a fry. I think tater tots are... I don't like them very much. They're okay. Oh. I think they're underrated. If you get a seasoned like, tater tot, I like it better than a seasoned fry. So yeah. I am it, going to it, say that. just always associate with like toddlers. <laughs> like kids. Fuck you. Like, I ate so many <laughs> Fuck I you, ate dude. So many. You cut up your hot dogs too and dip them in ketchup. Damn right I do. What's wrong with me doing that? No, I just, no, there's nothing wrong with tater tots, but like I had so many of them when I was a little kid and it's just the only time I think of tater tots i think of like the ones that are you get in the frozen food aisle and like i don't know i'm there's sure a, some places do them really well but i can't remember I just, where I it is a regular like, fry there's a place i go where they do like cajun seasoned tater tots super good i bet that would be good Ooh, super yeah. good. anything cajun season five guys cajun fries so there was uh there's once and unfortunately it was frozen and i baked them so they weren't as good as like actually having a good deep fried fry it was a waffle fry seasoned like a curly fry. And it was the, the most magical fucking experience I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> okay. So let's say we're being lazy. We're not making them. You're getting a bag of frozen fries. You're getting crinkle yep. cut. You're getting straight cut. You're getting seasoned. What are you getting? 
seasoned. I think um, I think I'd go crinkle. Crinkle, I like crinkle Straight when fried. you're baking it because it's got more surface area to get more crunch. Yeah, and there's more potato to it to me after. I, I like that. Yeah, I appreciate that. You said straight, Adam. Yeah, probably straight fries. Okay. That doesn't surprise me. I don't know. You like the McDonald's fry. You don't like tater tots. So yeah, McDonald's you're going my straight. Makes fry. Sense. I just don't think Burger King fries are good at all. To me, they this, had to. I they like had to McDonald's partner fries, but they're not my favorite fry. They had to partner with Mattel and Mr. Potato Head to convince people to even look at their fries again. Well, that was after the redesign or the redo. What about like yep. mid '90s when they redid their fry? Mm-hmm. Yep. There we go. The classic '72 PC triple commit. Fuck yeah. Also, Honestly, Wendy's fries aren't that bad. I think Wendy's fries are pretty good. I, I, I don't I, think they're. I prefer fries where there's still skin on the end of them. Yeah, I, like I just Penn, think they're Penn mediocre. Fries. Penn Station is delicious. Penn Station is great on all fronts. Yeah. It's Except for price. Yeah, they're expensive. But, it's, you know. I think every once in a while. Them last cast. Yeah. Did we? Yeah. Yep. That, that, they've been brought up know. recently. I think most of the food things we talked about today, we've talked about in another cast yeah. at some point. Okay, so we'll get off of food with this. How do you take your potato? Any form, what do you choose? Any form of potato. Smothered, form. covered. Oh, any form? I, not, you see, I don't think that's that's a valid question because it really depends on what I'm eating. If I'm eating Thanksgiving little... dinner, it's mashed. If I'm eating a steak, no, no, no. it's a big potato. You are getting only a potato right now. Just a potato? What do you want? Okay. How do you want it? Loaded baked potato. Bacon bits, cheese, butter, sour cream. Fuck chives. I don't want anything green in this. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. What about you, Adam? So you're talking like fries versus versus hash browns versus baked potato versus whatever. Mashed potatoes, twice baked potatoes, hash browns, Waffle House style. I mean, there's there's a whole lot of options there. There are, man. There's too many options actually. I'm thinking I'm doing the like twice baked potato skin kind of thing. Do, do pierogies okay. count? Oh, pierogies. <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah. I forgot like about a, those. like a like a triple cheese pierogi. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I see what you're putting down. That's pretty good. That's pretty All good. All right, <laughs> I'm okay with this. If that counts, if that doesn't count, probably a baked potato with a whole bunch of butter and cheese. I don't so like they're they're baked potatoes that much. I mean, they're fine. It's just not something I ever clamor for. Like if I get a steak, I get mashed potatoes or steak fries. I like I, if I get a thin. steak, I'll get baked usually. Yeah, steak, baked potato for me. Do you guys eat the skin? Yeah. No. Well, it depends on where I get it from. If I know it's been washed properly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the the potato skin is literally there to hold the, the part I'm eating. It is not edible. It is not supposed to be eaten. <sighs> Fuck your potato skins. I like the potato skin. I, I eat the potato skin. Like it's I eat I... it like a sandwich afterwards. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. I usually... Uh, Cut it. Just like cut it like a steak. <laughs> yeah, I would eat it like. Uh, but then again, I'm a fucking heathen, so I just like growl kind of thing. <laughs> wait, wait, I, I missed that. What was that? Oh. One more time. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, anyway, Dave is saying that I'm in the kitchen, so I should make us some baked potatoes. No, what you're getting is cheddar cheese pretzel combos. Uh, we got like a snack pack of these with a bunch of tiny bags, so I don't eat my weight in combos. Twelve out of ten snack oh, food. So good, love I, combos. I really don't are. like the cheddar one. Combos are S tier. Hey, Eric, do you want the pizza combos? Yes. I will eat them. Yes. Okay, you can have all of them. Pizza, Fuck combos, pizza combos are the best combo. I like them both. Although, if I'm going cheese, I like the cracker ones better than the pretzel ones. Really, cheese, I like that. I'm going cheese on cheese uh, cracker sandwiches. Because you know how they have the peanut butter like, peanut butter crackers? They have cheese oh, crackers. Oh, the... Yeah. 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 The, the, those, are, those are fucking those good. Those are pretty snack. good. I don't like the peanut butter form that much, but I love the cheese on cheese. Um, so, one last food thing. Uh, I did something interesting last night. Uh, and this, this is a... This is not a, a scotch, but... Is I was juice? drinking... I was, no, it's just straight up uh, American whiskey. Um, nice. 
So I was I was drinking whiskey last night and I wanted to watch something and I, I kind of ran out of my usuals like there's no episode of Star Trek that was hitting too well. So I found a random documentary on scotch and, and oh. sat there drinking scotch, watching a scotch documentary. And then they went over like how scotch tasting works and uh. like the technique and what you should do. So I quite literally followed along with the video example and, and had myself a good old fashioned scotch tasting at the comfort of my own desk. Nice. Uh, and it was, it was magical. How many different uh, types of scotch did you taste? So I have got, I've got three here. They're not, oh my God, I'm such a bean. I cannot hit shots to save my life. Anyway, I have three here at home, so I don't have very much. But uh, my favorite by far, which should surprise no one, it's the Macallan 12. I, I fucking love Macallan. I think that's most people's favorite, unless they spent a fuck ton of money to get really high-end scotch. Yeah. Like Glenfiddich, Glenfiddich is great. I love Glenfiddich. But... I, something about like the extra sweetness in the Macallan, thanks to the sherry barrels, it's mm. it's fantastic. It, it smooths it out. Yeah, it still has a little bit of peaty, but it's super smooth. Yep. Uh, and that's fuck. really what I want in my whiskey. I don't I don't want anything, you know, super hard putting hair on my chest. Like, give me a drink that I can drink. You don't want a liquid campfire. I, I mean, a little bit of campfire because that's what makes Scotch Scotch, but. Not, not only campfire. You don't want Lafroid. No. Lafroid, it's so good. I, I enjoy it. Every the, one, I have to be in the it, mood the for thing it. That, yeah, it's the. It's one of those things. I love the way it tastes, but I can't describe it in a way that makes it sound <laughs> as good as it is. <laughs> Saying something like, tastes like it a tastes campfire. like things that shouldn't taste good. Like yeah, it tastes like campfire. It kind of tastes like leather. It kind of smells like a sharpie. Like none of those things <laughs> sound good, but those Adam are is the a teenager in high school huffing like glue. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, it also tastes like like moss, or grass, or something like yep. that foresty flavor. Like if you were stuck in a weird English fantasy forest right after it rained, and it's kind of a little muddy but very mossy. That's yeah. what Scotch tastes like. I remember, uh, actually, I, when I visited Josh, uh, 72 PC Josh, he was he tried Lafroy and he said it tasted like the Shire, like the Hobbit Shire. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way That's of putting good. that. That's a really good one. Um, Epoch getting in there with uh, Scotch Sucks. Yeah, very divisive. A lot of people are not yep. a fan. That's fine. I, Everybody can like their own thing. Yeah. Unacceptable. If I like it, everyone eats Nitro. <laughs> What I really want are some of these documentaries on like the other liquors I have sitting over here, like Everclear. Let's have an Everclear tasting or, or not. Oh or, my God, a God. tasting. <laughs> Everclear tasting. Or, yes, or fire you know, like tequila. Fire. <laughs> uh, it tastes like cleaning solution and uh, yeah, not much else. It tastes like the inside of a hospital glove. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound appeasing. <laughs> All right, well. So games. Do you guys play some? Games? Games. I played Rocket League. Uh, just to talk Tarkov earlier, really. I had full intention to finish that um A Plague Tale Innocence. And mm -hmm. then we played Tarkov and I didn't get time to, to play it before the cast. I'm sorry. I was like, I'm gonna finish that so I can get like a final kind of opinion on it after the ending and stuff, but we got sidetracked. I did finish something. Oh yeah? Um, I didn't put it on show notes because I'm a bean. Uh, I finished oh, Final Fantasy You just wanted seven. to surprise us. Oh, you finished it. How, how, what did you think? So I went. I was in the last chapter or two chapters to go starting on Sunday morning. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to finish this and then I'm going to get stuff done around the house. 9 p.m. comes around. I finally roll credits. It took me forever. The last two chapters took for fucking ever. Really? Um, did it like drag on and on or was it just... Not in a bad way. It was okay. It was good. But the last two chapters took a long time. Hmm. Um, I beat it in 38 hours. Uh, that was skipping a couple side quests. If you, I could have probably 100%ed it in about 42, 43. Okay. What if you it's skip bad. all of the unnecessary quests? You might be able to 35 it, maybe. It's all in game. Yeah. 
and it would be about and five that's hours only like the first part <laughs> five hours of the og game probably mm. um they've added so much um to character building they did things at the last two chapters they did, they things. did things they that did weren't in things. the first game okay. um so there's a whole things you new can't talk about because of spoilers but i mean you kind of can there's a whole new thing oh, okay. you're going to see through this entire game you're like what the fuck are these they weren't there um they're introducing a concept that's common in sci-fi that's never been in final fantasy um there's actually some discrepancies between what you would expect to happen which what actually happens there's oh. actually entire sequences that happen now that you're like, hold on, this never was what the fuck. And it actually feeds into the potential of the other thing I was just talking about. It's just, I can't get into details. The ending was good, but it left a lot of fucking questions about how the fuck they're actually going to handle the rest of this series. Oh. Yeah. That's that's a good thing. I, they have said Kinda. that they plan on doing smaller pieces here on out so they'll be delivered faster is what they're hoping to do oh okay okay that's good i'm just curious what they're going to be waiting forever i wonder what they're going to do price point wise because if it was just going to be five parts over like six years i could see them being 60 bucks a piece but mm -hmm. if they're doing smaller there's no way they can charge 60. because initially every part was going to be its own playable game so I just don't know how they're going to manage that while doing Maybe smaller like parts. 30 bucks for the <clears throat> next parts. I don't know. Unless they do more like a season pass thing. Where like, hey, the second part is going to be delivered iteratively. You buy it for 60 bucks, but there'll be like five installments of it or something. Kind of like the Telltale games used to be. Only this would be a video mm. game and not a fucking movie you watch. <laughs> you guys hated that. I enjoy, it was a good story. I didn't story. enjoy the gameplay, but I'm not. I wasn't in the. It's just a movie camp, but yeah. Also, that was that was a hell of an angle. Sluga with the goal. I shot Sluga. Actually, a lot of the points of that Walking Dead game, I wished I could have just watched it instead of having to do anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Watching, which is actually why. Decision. Which is why Minecraft Story Mode by Telltale ended up on Netflix because it was mostly just a movie. Which is why, uh, y'all know my stance. I don't need to touch it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I beat it. It was good. I highly recommend it. It is going to be in the contention of probably everyone's game of the year. It was fantastic. Cool. And after talking to Souls, um, I did get some cross-reference between it and 15. It is more tactical than 15 in the sense mm -hmm. of you have to do different types of attacks where originally the magic was just a scale up here there's actual strategy on what you use and when you use it oh. yeah so that's really really nice so yeah final fantasy 7 it's fucking rad so uh, i saw you were playing something old tom something old something new yeah something borrowed and something blue actually it's not blue <laughs> at all but no it's not dude uh, so i i played a, a few old things um, so I played I played Valorant Zero, which is pretty cool. Um, I, Valorant Zero came out in 1999. Uh, it was a Half Life mod, and some people refer to it as Counter Strike. And then I played Valorant Go, uh, and then I played Valorant. <laughs> okay, okay, Tom. <laughs> Can I just mute the fucker? I was trying to get him to talk about a really cool game, and he's. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I. I Played some some CS just to like compare gunplay and mostly because they do hit different. Um, you know, CS one the gunplay feels chunkier. I feel like my shots actually matter and they're hard to control. CS Go feels kind of lightweight, honestly. Um, like you'll see your hits, but they they don't feel like they're doing very much damage most of the time, and that's probably because I'm bad. But the games do have a very different feel when it comes to gunplay. Okay. Valorant, on the other hand, leans far into the Counter-Strike, the OG Counter-Strike line, where you can get one tapped. You're going to get one tap. You're going to do some one tapping. If you take three shots, you're probably going to die. Um, and I, I actually like Valorant's gunplay more than CSGO, because it is closer to the original Counter-Strike. And I feel I like Eric was telling me that today. Yep. I really like the gunplay in it. I think oh, so. Um, Summit One G got out there saying that he thinks that this isn't going to end up being as a competitive game because of the gunplay. 
because I guess it's he labels it as too easy, which I think is more of it's not as extreme spread as what you get in Counter Strike. The spreads are more tame. Yeah, that's true. It, it is very easy to pull things back when you're when you're full throttling, just opening the gun up in Valorant than in uh, in CS:GO. And you don't have to crouch and bullshit. But either way, I don't want to get back yeah. into that comparison. Yeah. Um. So I did play some other old stuff. Um. I played some Majora's Mask. So I saw you were hey. doing you were doing Ogre Battle. Uh, I was also playing an N64 game. Uh, so Majora's Mask is one of my favorite Zelda games of all time. It is dark. It is depressing. The world is ending. Everything is inevitable. It's a time loop game. One of the first time loop games I've encountered. So you've got three days to save the world. And that's it. Now, you can reset time and certain things do stick around and you do keep your items from run to run. Those are my air quotes there. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I thought it was a very, uh, very timely game. There's a giant moon constantly getting closer to the town. There's a bunch of people saying like, ah, nah, it's not that bad. What, you actually think the moon is going to fall? Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and like they're continuing on with their daily lives and they're like but we can't cancel the festival there's a plague i mean a moon it's it's not gonna crash it's the moon dude that moon uh, is creepy as fuck the first time you see yeah, it. yeah it is i i love it i love it so much majora's mask is a game all about depression and death and coming to terms with that and it's it's just fucking emo as fuck it um, seems a lot darker I, than i, I would expect it. from a zelda title it was, uh, and that's one of the reasons why it it weirded me out as a kid. But I have grown increasingly fond of it as an adult. Uh, it is it is so so different in tone to the rest of the Zelda series, and I really really love it. But the big one that I thought you played that was interesting to me because I debated it. You played an old <laughs> new game, or a new an old, old new game. game. A new old game? An old, old, new, newishly old. It's the newest old game I've played in a while. Streets of Rage 4. Um, so <laughs> this, this, I knew it was happening. Like, I remember even on this show talking about they're making another Streets of Rage, but it completely fell off my radar until I launched Steam and I got the little box, Streets of Rage 4, now available. I'm like, oh, fuck. So I clicked it, I bought it. And by the way, if you're a game developer pay Valve the money to put your games there at the front because that is literally the only reason I bought it. And uh, yeah, it works. It work. That yeah. advertising worked. I've fallen for that too. I mean, it looks um, good. The animation is does, so oh good. Oh my God, it's so clean. Everything is fucking hand-drawn. Hand-drawn sprites, hand-drawn backgrounds. But it's not, it's so well done because it captures everything that was great about the original games like by being having readable enemies and enemies that operate in certain ways and giving you interesting challenges depending on just who's on the board it's it's quite literally doom's combat puzzle streets of rage had that thing where okay we've got a fat guy here he's breathing fire this guy's got a knife uh we've got robot with a pipe and then we've got this big chonky boy with a gun so all right Let's take out Chonker, then we got to take out Pipe, and because we got Knife Guy, we can grab his knife and then throw it at the robot so he drops the pipe. So you can use the pipe to kill Chonk Boy. And, like, you have to come up with all of these ways to play the enemies against each other. And then Streets of Rage 4 takes it even farther. Because at one point, this is the second level, you are thrown into a police station, there are cops, there are bad guy thugs, and they fight each other in addition to fighting you. You're hated oh, by everybody, but they hate each other. So what you can do is you can say, okay, well, there's four cops and three thugs. Let's take out the cop, and that way we can just kind of hit both sides and play them off each other so they can kill each other uh, instead of me doing all the work up front. So you don't want to take out a full team, then you're taking out, you know, all, all seven dudes on your own. You kind of want to try to try to play the odds a little bit. Uh, and it makes the game just a tiny bit more interesting. Now, is it is it incredible? Is it rewriting the books of of side scrolling beat em ups? Absolutely not. It is an iterative improvement. It is a very well done game, and it is everything I wanted in Streets of Rage Four, and, but it doesn't change a whole lot. Okay. Um, yeah. So you're an adult now. Your beat em ups yeah. still hold up. Um, 
only in one circumstance. So playing alone, I got to like the fourth level or something. There is a story mode, but I got to the fourth level. And I was like, all right, this is this is fun, but it's kind of kind of wearing on me. Like, it's a good game, but I just didn't want to. I don't know. I, I just didn't want to really play that much anymore. So I went back to the main menu. I saw, huh, online session. Oh, Madman. Who the fuck is Madman? Oh, well, he's got a game up set to easy mode. He's going through the story. Yeah, let's do it. So Madman and I teamed up in Streets of Rage. We went through the entire game in an hour and a half. Uh, and it was goddamn glorious. And what, what I said last night on, on the, the stream, I completely agree with in the morning after thinking it over a little bit more. The Magic of Streets of Rage was never the gameplay alone, right? Like, it's, it's a great game. I fucking love Streets of Rage. But the thing that made Streets of Rage magical was playing with people, was the couch co-op, was sitting next to your buddy, drinking beers, beating the shit out of NPCs, and it's just fun. Um... Even playing online with people, you still get a whole lot of that stuff. So Madman would grab a guy, I'd punch him in the face, he'd suplex him to knock over the other guys. It was <laughs> just stupid and fun in all the right ways a video game should be. Good. I, um, I just... Oh, also, there's couch co-op. So we gotta just play this. Oh, cool. Because cool. they do have they do have Steam remote play. It even reminds you, it says, hey, if you want to shift click invite your friends, you can both play on the same computer. So yeah, we should do that, guys. We should go it's, play some Streets of Rage. So I love that they're doing that. But it seems like it's bad for developers. I don't want to say bad, but... They're they're really? selling one copy as opposed to two. It's yes. true. And now, I, that I, said... I enjoy that they allow that. But... So as, as somebody weird. who's never played Streets of Rage, how, um, how similar is it to all those, like, brawler side scroller beat em up things like the ninja turtles the and Simpsons. ninja turtles the x-men one the it is literally else. the same game okay <laughs> i knew literally it was something like that game. but i didn't know if it was a little bit different or if it was another one of those that it's was more more like the ninja turtles x-men didn't have as much item interaction yeah um so i would think ninja turtles by straight up design um battle toads without the level design the way yeah. the combat works it is very battle toadsy um, Wasn't Battletoads one... just a straight up like 2D platformer? No. no. Oh. It was definitely a beat em up. It was it was double dragon with platforming sections. Yeah, th there, that's what I was saying. Like if you subtract the level design, the actual way the combat works, it's very item driven. You kill this guy to get this pipes. So you can easily kill these guys. You throw this over to that guy. Pick up this rock. It had a lot of that kind of stuff in it. Well, there was a Spider Man uh, beat em up. I played a lot too. Marvel was good at them. The Marvel ones were enjoyable, but they, they implemented mm -hmm. like these power up abilities and stuff. Mm. Which so cool. this what's what's nice about this game is that while there is a lot of nostalgia bait and clear call outs and references to earlier titles and titles in the same genre, it's not just nostalgia. Um, mm -hmm. They are trying some new stuff. It's interesting. Um, I I really like it. They're bringing back some of the old characters, some of the old bosses. Uh, and in one instance, uh, so Streets of Rage 1, 2, and 3 on the Genesis all played pretty different. Like, 1 was very different from 2 or 3, and 3 definitely felt the best out of all of them. Um, but the your special attack, and you only had a, like, a limited number of them in, in Streets of Rage 1, you would call for a cop car who, there was a cop who would lean out of the window with, like, artillery rockets and just fire them on the enemies. Which was pretty cool. Not, not awesome. Not as awesome as like the fire wind punch that you got in two or three, but still cool. So one of the bosses from that that same like police squadron from Streets of Rage one, her special move is calling that in, and it's quite literally the exact call out from the game, almost using the exact framing of the artwork in the the action shots. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> Um, so, Erk, do you remember in the Ninja Turtles arcade game, the, the first one, there was this moment where all the turtles gear up and they jump off of a, like, skyscraper or the roof of a building, and it, like, freeze frames right there with them all, like, jumping off this roof? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they do that. Really? 
It was it was absolutely frame for frame that scene where you're transitioning to a new level. Uh, they they absolutely know where they came from. Uh, they know the influential games. It seems like this is a love letter to 2D brawlers, and I I couldn't be happier with it. Also, that music is pumping, which is one of the other things. Which it's it's so weird. Streets of Rage is probably more known for its soundtrack at this point than its gameplay. Like its gameplay was good, really? but it was it was the same as like most other things. Yeah, that soundtrack fucking kills. It is so good, uh, and it's still good. In this game, you do have the option between the new remix tracks, which are all new Streets of Rage style music, which are fucking great, but you can also turn on the nostalgia tracks if you want. So you can okay. get the bleeps and bloops of a chiptune Streets of Rage soundtrack. <laughs> That's cool. They give you the option. I, I was really worried this was going to be the Duke Nukem Forever of Brawlers. I mean, it's it's yeah. been how long for a Streets of Rage to come out? Yeah. And it I'm is. Just- the yeah. last one I played was in the 90s on the Genesis. That is how long <laughs> ago this was. So yeah, th- it's, it's cool to hear. It's, it's really good to hear that it was, actually went well. Yeah. yeah. So I'm super pleased with it. It is, uh, I think it's on sale right now. It, wa- it normally is 25 bucks. Now it's like 22 or something after tax. Um, so if you're in the mood to like drop money on a brawler, um, and keep in mind when... You don't play this to beat the game. You play this to beat the game lots and lots of times because there are unlocks and stuff you get from playing on higher difficulties or completing it a certain number of times. Um, oh, okay. The full game is about an hour and a half long. Uh, so perfect, perfect amount of time to just sit down with a buddy and go through the whole thing. Um, but for, for 20, 25 bucks, I think it's well worth the price. Hmm. Yeah, I'm probably going to do some uh, remote play with you. Some yeah, point. let's do it. I'm wanting to check right that now. out. Let's go. Fuck uh, Rocket League. Let's go. Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that'd be a good type of game for to do while we podcast, I think. Yeah. yeah. Could be decent. Like a beat em up. I, I almost suggested it, but I don't know if it supports. I don't know how many players it supports. That's the thing. Because if it's just a two player only thing. Yeah. Eh. Be no go. But either way, it's awesome that it went well. Or it was yeah. released well, made well, plays well, all well. It's oh, all things. good. It's good. Slugger can have that. So um, I got back a little bit to a game I was playing a while ago. Um, oh my God, I blanked on the name. Unrailed. So um, I was chilling in the oh. Discord. I saw that they had a single player mode finally come up where they implemented a bot that you can instruct on what to do. And you can actually lay a track or a, I shouldn't say a track. But you can actually put a um, guidance system saying, like, here's where I would like you to build this track. So you can tell them to build the track, they'll lay it on that exact uh, path. Or you could tell them, hey, cut trees, and it's actually going to cut trees around that path and then slowly expand out. So it's a really, really smart bot system that allows you to actually play alone now, which is really cool. Because if you wanted to try special combinations out on trains... You had to involve a friend. They had to be down to experiment. If they weren't down to experiment, shit was just going to get weird. And so yeah, it was, it was a really, really, really good release. I was super pumped with it. And um, I do want to touch on this real quick. Uh, Valorant uh, played some more. They did release rank mode now, everyone. So you can go ahead and get your placements on it to play five games to place. Um, I haven't done it, but dear God, that game's fun with five stack. So <laughs> fun with a five stack. Especially when you start to understand all the abilities of your heroes and can start using them together. So mm, fun with the five nice. stacks. Yeah. <laughs> I really do I play- like, and I, I wish more games were like this, but I love that the difference between winning and losing in that game is all about communication. It feels very Rainbow yeah. Six. Yeah, that's what I like about Rainbow Six. Honestly, I um, think the audio, directional audio in that game is better than Rainbow Six, even. Directional is, yeah. audio is great. Rainbow Six has some issues to it. Um, but it's pretty good. Way better than like a Tarkov or a PUBG for sure. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, um, it's good. I played it. It was fun. Um, Tom, you have yeah. something that I don't know if I've ever brought up on the cast that I have played. Um, oh, really? I didn't know you've played this. Yes, you played. It makes sense. This is your kind of game. You played an older new game. Yeah. Um. So. 
I, I'm going to blame the escapist for this. They're doing these things called game umentaries, which by the way is the worst fucking name in the goddamn world. <laughs> game umentary. Jesus fucking bad. Christ. I wonder what so they're bad. doing. Yeah. But anyway, they, they took they took literally everything out of the no clip playbook and they did one of these things based on um uh based on Darkest Dungeon. Um yeah. and so I was watching this, I got about halfway through, I was like you know, this looks exactly like a the kind of game I would I would love and get super far into. Uh, and so I loaded it up. I had bought it forever ago and forgot that it existed and never played it because that's, that's what we what do. That's what you do on Steam. That's what you do. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's good. The mechanics are weird. Uh, I really really enjoy it. Um, but it is it is different than most other roguelikes um, because your characters will operate like people. They're not just there to follow your orders. They will they will revolt if you fuck them up too bad. Like <laughs> a skeleton fucks them up with like some eldritch horror attack really, really badly. Well, guess what? They could learn some really, really bad shit from that. They could become kleptomaniacs or they could freak out or get anxiety or other things. And it actually affects their, the way they play. Um, huh. which yeah. is really fucking cool. I had like this Holy warrior paladin guy. Um, and your players get stressed. They have to de-stress. And in town, you've got a brothel. You've got some gambling. You've got a tavern. You know, all the things necessary to relieve stress. No, nah, this trip. guy says, <laughs> yeah, this guy says, no, I'm too good for that, man. Uh, I'm just going to go pray for a little bit, okay? Which isn't as effective as, you know, drinking your sorrows away. So this guy's over there <laughs> fucking praying while getting stressed <laughs> out. And I have to take the B squad into this dungeon to try to get some loot out. Um, it's the game makes you confront some horrible things about yourself because there are some people who play this game and get super attached to their heroes. This game is really, really, I don't want to say easy. It's never an easy game, but it does get easier if you act like a cold calculating CEO throughout the entire thing. It's like, well, some of you may die, but that is a risk I am willing to take. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a brutally hard game. It is a yeah. brutally hard game. So your characters will level up. So, you know, if you've got a guy with a lot of levels that you've put a lot of time into and you absolutely love him, he can get his shit fucking wrecked. He can be permanently killed off and there's no way to get him back. Uh, and you have to be okay making those kind of sacrifices. It's a beautiful marriage between XCOM and has-been heroes. It's such a fun, like, tactical roguelike with this whole, like, permadeath of XCOM. Yeah. So good. So the, how, um, how far did you get? Uh, not very far. I'm on week three, which means I've done done two different dungeon runs. Um, and one of, one of them wasn't successful. Um, you do have the ability to leave the dungeon at almost any point and take the treasure you have with you. So I found some enemies. They fucked me up real bad. I made some bad, bad, poor awful mistakes uh got one of my people killed ah cost to doing business let's get the fuck out of here with the loot we have and we did um i waited until they died to hit that retreat button i could have done it sooner but uh you might yeah, have been able to get know. more loot so you gotta stay for yeah. the loot i didn't give me the loot <laughs> all the loot but yeah i, I saw you <laughs> play that i'm like that doesn't feel like a you game <clears throat> uh it's got excellent writing it has some wonderful oh, the, writing oh the writing's great but it just like the gameplay wise i i jumps to me more actually i mean parts of it jump more for adam to me but even then like the XCOM nature of it and the navigation of the map oh no i know souls it's, loved it but yeah it's definitely not my usual fare um but i'm enjoying the hell out of it uh, so if you're looking for a roguelite, uh, you haven't, you know, you've, you've put as much time as you're going to into Slay the Spire or whatever else, um, pick up Darkest Dungeon. It's cheap right now. I want to say the second one is coming out soon or it's already out. One of the two, they're working on it. I don't believe it's I think. out. Okay. But uh, yeah, now is the perfect time to pick it up and see what all the fuss is about. Because Get it on a Switch if you have a Switch. It's a really good Switch game. Yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, it's available it's, basically for everything now. It's very bite-sized. So anything that's bite-sized play-wise, I feel fits the Switch very well. Agreed. But yeah. Um, oh, there was one other thing I did I want to touch on real quick. It's my first time ever doing it. Last night, just chilling in the Discord, was playing some Rocket League. Josh and I are doing some doubles. Ty gets on, and then we re- just, uh, Josh is like, hey, we've been doing this. Let's do it. We start jumping into random 3v3 tournaments via Rocket League through the yep. tournament Oh, app. nice. I, you guys did it too the other night. That's where I think t- Josh started getting the idea. Super fun. Like, that was actually cool. a fucking blast to just jump in it. One of them was actually a <laughs> casted tournament. Oh, that's cool. I like, didn't know that. One of them was no nice. demos. So instead of demoing somebody, you hit them supersonic. They just fucking fly. <laughs> so, I mean, it was super rad. But yeah, um, I just wanted to get that out there because if you haven't done it, it's actually really enjoyable. You should probably give it a shot. That's fun. One thing that I love about that is that I feel like I can play in those tournaments with my friends because it's not MMR based. So like yeah. playing Rocket League with you guys, you guys are so, so, so much better than I am at Rocket League that it, it feels like I am the boat anchor or I'm just getting stunted on left and right, which is cool, <laughs> whatever. Um, but with the tournament, it's not because it's quite literally the teams are just loaded in. So you get everyone from like, yeah, you know, fucking RLRS level players in there, fucking mopping the floor with everyone. And then you get beans like me, who's just like three guys are like, I don't know, man, I'm only a little drunk. I guess we could play rocket league and that's it. <laughs> like it's, it's goddamn magical. Yeah. We went from the very, well, our very first match was just like steamrolled. Like, to the point where halfway through the game, you're like, okay, <laughs> Eric's the only one allowed to score now. And, like, just complete <laughs> dick-off mode hits. And yep. then the next team was actually able to do stuff. So it's like it's a whole grab bag. Yep, makes a big difference. That's super fun, though. I, I just wanted to call that out. If you've never done it, like, you're just chilling with friends, not taking anything just serious, just doing casuals, don't really care about your MMR right now, jump into those, man. Those are a blast. More the only thing is, I feature. don't think it counts for your levels, so it doesn't count to Rocket Pass, I don't believe. I didn't pay attention, so I don't know for <clears> sure. <throat> but that would be the only possible downside. Yeah, I like it. I also like that in these tournaments, you can, uh, and people regularly do, add really stupid fucking modifiers. We were yes. playing the standard soccer mode, but with the basketball. So the bounces were all, like, throwing all the normal like rocket league veterans off it's just like what it's not supposed to bounce that way and i'm just like i don't know which way it's supposed to bounce i'm doing great <laughs> <laughs> ignorance is actually getting sometimes. an advantage that way <laughs> yeah well speaking of random modes you guys see the current actual mode that's on rumble yeah. drop shot baby rumble drop rumble shot. drop shot this seems fucking nuts i love rumble i'm bad at drop shot so this might actually make me good I like drop shot. I can, I'm can. i decent with uh, rumble. I don't think I'm going to enjoy rumble drop shot. <laughs> I have not played a match of it, but I don't think I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah, okay, you know what I absolutely hate? I hate the... Um, because all the, all the like sidebar game modes are ranked now. They have ranks associated with them, which means you can elect to forfeit a game if it's not going your way. Yes. I f- fucking hate people that try to forfeit in goddamn Rumble. It's goddamn <laughs> Rumble, man. Come on. You don't have to try hard this. There's tornadoes in fucking boxing gloves, man. What are you doing? Dude, yes, we're losing seven to nothing, but who the fuck cares? We're here to play Rumble. Some, Some people, people take it very seriously. Title. Yeah. Dude, fuck that. There's a special title, like RNG I- champ. That's ranked I, Rumble I to you, it. sir. I get it, but fuck that shit. Let's just play Rumble. Dude, you play to win the game. Hello? No, you yeah. play to play the game. Play to play the game. God, that's awful. But um, before we get to it, anyone have anything else they want to touch on before we um, kind of scooch on over the news? I got uh, a Valorant no. key, finally. Oh, oh really? nice. Nice. We should play. Yeah, I played the tutorial. I haven't played the game yet. I can't remember what the tutorial was, but they have a really good training area in that game. Like where you can Yeah, actually the tutorial get a range. was great. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, the tutorial was really well done, I think. Yeah. 
Well, cool. You're going to have to um, actually play with us sometime. It's a good time. Yeah. And I'll try it worry. out. I'm not a, oh, nope. I don't want to say I'm not a try hard. I do try to win. I just suck. Mm-hmm. So it looks like I don't try hard. <laughs> it's not something I see myself playing a lot, but I'm glad I did get it, get the key finally so I could try it out. Yeah. Well, and with that, it's time for some news. news. And I think the news. biggest news, news that came out this week, I think hands down was the last of us part two related, like on all fronts. Yes. Like that. Yeah, that pretty was, much. Um, earlier this week, there were some leaks of all the cutscenes in game. I don't, I, the details have been out. I haven't been able to read it yet about whom or why, but all the cutscenes were released. So they're out there. If you want to see them that said, I, I didn't no realize desire. it was all the cutscenes. I thought it was just like some gameplay footage. I heard it was all the cutscenes that got leaked. Damn. It was, it was big enough that spoilers are an issue and the devs are warning yeah. people. Yeah. Like, I heard that. Like, that's why I wasn't looking for it. Yeah. yeah. I, I really, really do not want to see any of that. I, I don't mind getting spoilers naturally. Like that does really bother me, but I'm not going Hank to go Hill out of my shows way. Up and then sits on the iron throne. And then he puts his name into the Goblet of Fire. I fucking hate Can that. I say a major Avengers Endgame spoiler? Or is it too... <sighs> I think it's probably too soon. Okay. It shouldn't be. It was a cultural touchstone event that everyone should have taken place in, but... Okay. Well, Just well, to be nice. Well, Just well, to well, illustrate my point of how much I hate spoilers and how some people give them away even when they don't think they're giving them away. <laughs> like, I was... <laughs> eating dinner with some friends and we were going to go see Avengers Endgame. And I spent the whole like, you know, previous weeks intentionally avoiding any of like the memes and stuff because it had been out for a couple of weeks and I hadn't seen it yet. Mm. So I'm like avoiding all the spoilers as much as I can. And I successfully avoided all of them actually until we're eating dinner before we go to the movie theater. <laughs> and, and I was like, I'm glad I didn't see any spoilers. I managed to avoid them all week. And they're like, yeah, we did too. The only one we know of is no. this major oh, event that happens. <laughs> oh, that's such um, a... The, the wedding it... scene between Cap and Iron Man? Dude, yeah. I was sobbing during that part. It was goddamn beautiful. Give you guys beautiful. some context. It, was, it happens uh, towards the very end of the movie. A uh, major character has something very major happen to them. Oh my that God. Someone gives off a lot of emotion. to you? Yeah. Oh my Fuck god. I'm like, why would you say that in a conversation about <laughs> avoiding the spoilers? I don't remember if I knew that was <sighs> happening going in or not, but because damn. I didn't know that. At I didn't all. know anything. And then they were like, yeah, that's the only one we heard of. I'm like, oh my god, that's like the big that's it's a big one. That's yeah, that, big. That's a big fucking thing. And that's coming from like I'm not even that invested in the whole Marvel universe. Like I didn't even see all the Avengers movies. I missed completely Age of Ultron. You didn't miss a whole lot. That's what I heard. But like I I was watching characters. I, I watched Infinity War the night before. We went and saw Endgame just so I knew what the hell was going on. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you uh, kind of need that one before the Endgame. Yeah, you yeah. really need that one. That was very necessary. But even watching Infinity War, like I didn't know who some of the characters were. Like, where did these people come from? And I haven't seen a lot of the Marvel series anyway. We're getting off on a yeah. tangent. What were we talking about? <laughs> Last oh, of Us. Last of Us. Yeah. Uh, has a release date. That was the other big news that came out. Uh, yep. June 19th. Hey. We will have a game. So then I can actually start to actually look at the depth of what all was leaked. But for right now, I am not even fucking around to try to find information on it just because I don't care. I'm going to get yeah. the game. I need a PS4 to borrow. <laughs> uh, Jesus dies at the end. Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> so sad. Um, oh, speaking of that, a side note, I started watching Jesus. Devs. Devs? That's, that's an interesting show. Yeah. Um, it was like, it's a FX, FX miniseries, or is it just Hulu? It may just be just a Hulu thing. It's an eight-episode show. Like, not a Ooh. season to season, just eight episodes. Bang. Done. Super oh, interesting. Cool. I can't say any context. It's a really, of the really show. long movie. <laughs> yes. But I can't give you any context of the show. I can just say it's really good and it deals with tech. And I, not, I get worried about drama stuff or a like comedy that. or a, what is it? It's drama. Okay. Super serious. Yes. Okay. Not lighthearted. I, I get worried about stuff like that. Because, like, I. 
because anytime tech appears on TV, it's either like, it's never Mr. Robot levels of, of accuracy, right? It's never the yeah, we we literally hired pen testing companies and, and recorded their screens for the shot. It's I'm gonna write a GUI in Visual Basic and backtrace no, the no, IP no, 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 while no, typing not. simultaneously <laughs> on the same keyboard with another person. Um so some of the stuff they talked about, like I'm no expert in quantum theory stuff. I'm no expert mm -hmm. in high level math, but some of the stuff they were talking about just in the casual conversations was stuff that was legit. Like they were talking about when the phase is zero between two different sine waves and gave an equation. And I started thinking about like, it checks out. Like they were actually doing legit shit. Hmm. They math were talking out. They were talking about different encryption algorithms and the person's like, I'm not trying to say one's better than the other. I'm just saying they're both equally weak once you start doing quantum shit. And like, they weren't going into details that you would think right or wrong. It's just, they're scratching it to the point where they're able to say what they're saying safely. Okay. Um, there is, okay, I could say this. It's about quantum computing. Um, and it, it, I mean, there's different touch points of it about essentially kind of like the ethics of it in a way, I guess, kind of come out as well. Um, it's super, super interesting. Um, just if you like dramas, watch it. That's all I can say right now. Um, yeah. Fair enough. Sorry for right. that. Um, it just kind of came up. Um, next news. Bethesda donates $1 million to COVID-19 relief efforts. Bethesda? Oh. Bethesda, who did I say? You. Who did I say? You said Bethesda. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, you know, you got it right. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm just saying, we, as, uh, by we, I always fucking hate on Bethesda all the fucking time because they are a trash fire of an organization, but they donated a million dollars. They're trying to help where they can. And Bethesda, this is to you. Cheers. <laughs> all right. So, some other stuff. A little light heart. Oh, I don't want to say lighthearted. Um, Valorant, Valorant Twitch streamers were doing some shady shit. Twitch yep. caught on and they stopped some of it. Um, so what they were they doing do. is they were going live with VODs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so they yep. were farming drops by being live with pre-recorded material. <laughs> so uh, Twitch well. caught Twitch caught on, Twitch shut it's, it down, and Twitch put it against terms of service. So if you're doing it now, oh, you could get okay. banned. It's almost as if tying game unlocks to, to watching Twitch streams has weird bad knock-on effects. <laughs> I don't know what kind of media or if anybody has actually talked about this at length or anything, but uh, yeah, probably probably worthwhile having a podcast or something on it. Okay, I don't think it's as general as what you just said. It's the idea of having it fully open, that you're it leaving was, it to the masses. There's going to be bad shit that happens. It, it was, so this problem was widespread enough that when casually looking for Valorant keys, I was running into this. Well, no, no, that's oh, what really? I'm saying, though. It's, I'm not saying it was a small issue. I'm saying the issue, the scope of the issue is small. It's because Valorant let all streamers be drops. It wasn't yeah. selective streamers. It was all streamers. Yeah. If it was still selective, I don't think we would have had this issue. No, no, of course not. Because you can trust the big streamers, right? When, when Valorant says, hey, Summit, we want you to show off this game. We want you to stream it. These people are getting drops from this, like actual partners, right? With legal agreements and shit like that. Yeah, you can be relatively assured that the people you're legally partnering with to do something are going to follow the, the letter and law of the contract. The, I, I agree with you. The issue is where, you know, they said, Oh, well we need more keys out there. So everybody can be a drop streamer. Literally everyone. It was, it was I a think, good gesture. The idea good was idea. You, you can watch people you want. You don't have to watch people. We tell you to, which was a nice yeah. idea, but like everything else, the minority fucks it for the majority. Yeah. yeah, they should have just like they could have expanded the number of like recognized streamers that could drop, and then just increase the drop rate so it isn't so crazy low because it was I, yeah. low, low, low. I don't, th I don't think it had to do with drop rate though, because the way I understand the way these drops worked, it had nothing to do with how many streams you were actually watching. It was effectively if you're watching a qualified stream, you're put into a pool. 
and then you were selected out of that pool. I this is this is yeah, the but- issue though because we are talking about this. There are threads on this. There's entire subreddits about this. There there's everyone in their mom on Twitch is talking about this. We don't know exactly how this thing is implemented. And if Riot did a little bit of due diligence and just said, "Hey guys, just so you know, this is how shit works. This is this is how we're we're running the beta key system. This is how you're getting a drop. These are the specifics around your concerns." Mm-hmm. We wouldn't have to have these conversations every single week. That is true. And they're, the they're getting time. a little better about that, right? Because like with Vanguard, they're anti-cheat. They are taking that information overload approach. This is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. This is how we're doing it. This is who we told about that we're doing it. And this is a bug bounty program, which if you find something, you can get a, a cool bazillion dollars out of it. They had with to the do drops, that. They had to do that though, because of the I, nature of what it was. I get it, but they could have done that with the drop too. It, could it seems like they're really good at communicating on certain things, but on others, they're fucking awful. Once again, they had to with the anti-cheat. They didn't have to with their drops. When you're putting something in the kernel of a computer, you need to know what, why, what you're doing to safeguard it. I mean, that's super yeah. important. When you're just giving out drops on Twitch, it pisses people I, off, but people don't care. I get it's not important, but... Mm-hmm. The fact that we've had so many conversations, you think somebody would have just been like, hey, motherfuckers, listen, a little earlier than they did. Yeah, I, and I agree. I, I don't like how they did it, but what's done is done. And also, real quick, uh, we didn't put this on the news. They updated some stuff about their anti-cheat. You can shut it down now out of the system tray. Oh, yep. okay. Now, the bad thing is to be able to play the game, it has to be on. And to be able to get it back on, from what I've heard, you have to restart your computer. Yeah. Uh, so well, this means you effectively let's... have to restart your computer before you play the game every time if you turn off the anti-cheat. Which is annoying. Okay. Yeah. yeah. At least we're in the land of mo- a lot of gaming PCs have SSD drives, so restarting the PC is not as big of an inconvenience as it once was. It is if you yeah. do have things that you don't auto-sign in or things that require still manual sign-in to factor in things of that nature. Like my Steam, it auto like it automatically signs me out, and then I two factor in. So oh, I have to do okay. that every time I sign on. Oh, that would annoy me. <laughs> That's where I sit with that. I get so, it, but yeah. But either way, I just wanted to make sure to get that in there. Um, Nintendo uh, had a little bit of a breach. 160k mm. accounts hacked. Yep. What kind of? Is it just account information, payment information? Um, so I need to, I honestly need to look at all the details. I don't think this is as widespread uh, because the, the people who are affected are getting emails. I did not. I was not affected by this. Um, Brene was not affected by this. Like No one I know it, was. It, yeah, like it's it's a thing, but I think it was kind of a small thing. Okay. I don't think it was anything super serious other than you know change change your shit let's let's find it out stuff like that um if you're using a password manager you know psa super easy to change yeah. your password and uh Delias calls um, out it's no big deal everyone's mario paint picture just got leaked on the internet <laughs> oh fuck my mario paint oh no now we know what tom's been uh, painting looks, in private <laughs> my mario paint looks nudes. like login ids and passwords so, so, yeah, just basic account information. If you're using a password manager, rotate that shit. If you're not using a password manager, what are you doing with your life? Uh, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> <laughs> I really do need to use one. I just haven't. It's so uh, lazy. That's what I love about it. It is the laziest thing in the world and somehow more secure. Ah, uh, Yeah, I need to at some point, but I don't. Um. Oh, oh this- yeah. That last news article we've already touched, Twitch. Uh, bans VOD drops or VOD yep. streaming for drops. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's Which good. makes yeah, sense. Which and I don't think it's going to be a big issue because most drops aren't associated to a blanket game. They're associated to streamers for events. Yeah. So I, I think that it's cool that they're explicitly calling it out, but I don't think it's going to be an issue. Outside of No, I don't, I don't think it's going to be too big. Well, and honestly, that's about all we got. Um, any of you guys got any things? Anything you want to add? Um, 
Valorant Zero is better than Valorant. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think that's all we got for you guys this week. Um, like always, uh, we have different ways to consume anything we do. Uh, we have our Twitch down below, seventy-two PC official or underscore official. Uh, every day we you put up a Twitter. random play, as well as some other fun stuff from time to time. You, you uh, said Twitch, it's Twitter. Twitter, yes, Twitter. Thank you. Sometimes I misspeak. We do have a Twitch though. We do have a Twitch, which is uh, Twitcher. TV slash seventy two pin connector, and we're live every Saturday at uh, six PM Pacific for the podcast. We also now have YouTube that will be getting regular content updates. We have the monthly montages as well as we will have the weekly uh, podcast going up to there. Uh, this one will be the first that we start getting back on that weekly cadence. Uh, expect this in a sometime this week. It will be up. There will be a little more delay than normal due to some other things we're doing. But yes, we'll will be getting back up to uploading those weekly. And then we have our um, Discord. Uh, it's down below on our Twitch page. Just click join us. Uh, we do a lot of games through the week. So yeah, just come say hi. You guys got any parting words? Uh, we love you. We love you. Great parting words. Right? All that said, <laughs> till next week, game on. See you guys.